Hello and welcome to Career View Mirror. I'm your host, Joelle Crawford, and today I have Colleen Georges, and we have a fantastic book. She is the author, Dr. Colleen Georges, by the way, Dr. Dr. <laughs> Rescript, the story of your t you're telling yourself, and it has won multiple awards, and I'm gonna show you the book here so that you can see the cover. There it is, get the book now. It is amazing. It's eight practices to quiet your inner antagonist, amplify your inner advocate, and author a limitless life. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. I'm so excited to be here, <laughs> finally. Yes, I know. I feel like we yeah. talked like a year, a year right. ago, but it was probably a couple months, but it felt like yeah. years ago. And I'm so happy to have you on Me the too. show. You're not only an author, you're a coach, you're a speaker, you're, you're like, you're everything. So how <laughs> can you describe for our viewers? Sure. What exactly do you do? Sure. Thanks. It's funny, there's not like always an easy way to describe it when people ask me that question. Right. So, you know, I have my own business mm -hmm. and I do um, individual life and career coaching. Mm -hmm. um, I also do speaking and mm -hmm. training. Mm -hmm. um, and then external to that, I teach at Rutgers University. I mm. teach um, uh, a women's leadership social justice course. Awesome. And then I teach some courses at the Graduate School of Education counseling classes. And that's in, in New Brunswick? In New Brunswick, yeah. Excellent, okay, yeah. the main campus. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. This is so exciting yeah. to have you on here. So how did you get started in all of this? <laughs> I mean, did you just hatch out of an egg and say, I want to be, you know, a PhD and, and yeah. write a book and coach people <laughs> and teach classes? So how did you get started? How did this career start for you? Yeah. So, you know, it's funny, always like looking back to the first things that you want to do. And I always mm -hmm. like to ask that question mm -hmm. of, of my clients. Of your too, clients. Right? How did you get started? Um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when I was a kid, um, I, I think one of the first things I ever wanted to be was an archaeologist because I... I watched all those Indiana Jones movies and, you know, it looked like he had a really exciting life. Of course. And so he was a professor, so there yes, was some connection. Yes, there's a connection. Right? <laughs> there it is. I thought that was pretty cool. And um, But then he had this other world where he's going mm -hmm. on adventures yes. and, you know, finding treasures. And, and so I just thought it seemed like an exciting thing. And for a long time, you know, I would, like, play, like, like fake archaeologists with digging my friends. Digging in the backyard. Digging in the backyard, <laughs> you know, thinking everything I found was an artifact and in my mind, making up like if I find like a broken dish piece yes. I think like oh I wonder how old this yes. is who, who this belonged ate to off of it. who ate yes. off of this dish. Yes. so you know and then like like you know most people you know, there was a period where I wanted to be a you know, uh, a singer in mm -hmm. seventh grade. I had a time capsule that, you know, we, we dug up and it said oh. that I was gonna be leading my rock band around that the country. That sounds fantastic. By the time I was in high school. Mm -hmm. um, but I also took a psych class in high school and um, I really liked to write mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I really liked the psychology class and I was like a camp counselor in high school. Mm -hmm. And it kind of just merged into deciding to major in psychology in college and, um, and making the, you know, the choice. Am mm -hmm. I going to write or am I going to do something in the helping professions? Mm -hmm. And I ended up ultimately doing, doing both. both. Yeah. Yes, you did both. Yeah. And you can do both. You can do both. You could do lots or, of you could, Or more than both, <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that sounds fantastic. I was also a psychology yeah. major and I also like to write. And so that's interesting how you took all of your favorite loves together and you combine them to make what make it what you wanted. Yeah. So did you get a degree in psychology? And is that what your PhD is in? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, so I studied psychology in college and then um, I decided to get my master's degree in counseling. So, you know, at that point, mm. um, I think my, my plan while I was in college, I initially was was interested in either working in a psychiatric hospital mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or um, I was also interested in maybe working with the prison population. Okay. And that was my original goal. And mm -hmm. then I did an externship during my senior year mm -hmm. of college. And it was um, at what was Marlboro Psychiatric Hospital. They closed a couple of years later. And I was there for a week over winter break, mm -hmm. and um, and I was in the paranoid schizophrenic ward, and a lot of the patients in the facility um, had committed a crime. So I was kind of getting so you kind of exposed the best to, of both worlds exactly. that you wanted to work in. Mm -hmm. And and I'll always say it was one of the most interesting, amazing experiences I've ever had. But the thing I think that bothered me the most was that the the people that work there seemed very. 
um, kind of jaded, and um, and I asked a question with my you know 21 year old yes. like you know optimism. I said, mm -hmm. you know, how many of the patients get out and live you know thriving lives? And the response was, some of them get out, but they always come back. Uh, and I thought, I don't ever want to feel like that. Wow. And that was how I ended up. I was working with teenagers in foster care at the time, actually down South Jersey because yeah. I, I live in Central. Uh, and yes. so I'm I, from Central. Okay, so perfect. We, we talk yes. about that. We're home girls, so <laughs> we right. definitely know. Yeah. So okay. the, the, a lot of the teenagers lived in South Jersey, and mm -hmm. I then I thought maybe f working with teens or working with families, which was my plan when I went to graduate school. And so I did a master's in counseling, and then I did my um, it's an EDD doctor of education, mm -hmm. like a PhD, mm -hmm. um, in um, counseling psychology, mm -hmm. and um, and then lo and behold, I asked my advisor if there's any opportunities to work with teens or families mm -hmm. around the area, and she said, well, I don't know about that, but my friend over at Career Services at, at Rutgers is looking for an intern. Okay. And my whole life changes in 1998 by accident. So it always happens by accident. <laughs> right. It's never by accident. Though. Right. I think it's part of the plan, right? Yeah. So you, you get this job in Career Services, and then what happens? I fell in love with it. I mean, I was working with college students, so mm -hmm. that was 1998. That was mm -hmm. when I first had my introduction to working with college students as mm -hmm. well as um, doing career counseling. Mm -hmm. And my supervisor, who we're still very close, mm -hmm. um, she originally had intended that I would do a lot of the like career exploration stuff mm -hmm. mainly. Mm -hmm. And I ended up also loving to do resumes and doing job search oh, and yeah. graduate school applications. Yeah, this is career coach 101 here. Yeah. This is like you were, you were in it. It was, I loved it. My favorite was working with the seniors. I really fell in love with that work. Mm -hmm. Um, getting them career ready. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, you know, helping them think about graduate programs and write personal statements and work on resumes and cover letters and the whole process of mm -hmm. job search. And I was like, wow, I love working with college students because it's just like that time of your life is when you're figuring out who you are. Yes. Um, in every single way. In every right? single aspect, yeah. Absolutely. And so I loved it. And um, and I really, I love the career stuff. And it was not on my radar, was not, in fact, when my advisor said that to me, I, I had one of those like, oh, you know, like, oh, I'll do that. <laughs> you know, like, but all right, I need experience. And it changed my life. And I ultimately, throughout grad school, I became an academic coach at the Learning Center. That's amazing. I worked for Residence Life as a hall director mm -hmm. for four years, mm -hmm. which paid the tuition. Yes, it does. But it was awesome, and I loved it. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I just, and then I was at the Counseling Center for my internship at Rutgers. Mm -hmm. And I just, um, that really is where the whole working with college students began. It's where the whole idea of, of doing, I think it, two things. One, the career counseling work, mm -hmm. but also really loving to work with other issues, but with a population where it's not so much about deeper psychological challenges. It's mm -hmm. really more about, I'm feeling stuck, I'm feeling confused, and I need help. I need some help, some right. direction, you right. know? And there's no classes out there that give direction, you know, exactly. we go to school with this idea, or we go to college with this idea that we have this path and then we're supposed to kind of take the courses and there's no syllabus to life, you no. know? Like once you get out of college, there's no track that right. you can follow. So this is really helpful to know that you had, you know, you had your Indiana Jones idea in the yeah. beginning, uh, but you're still <laughs> working in academia. So I yeah. mean, you're still getting, you're still getting it together. Yeah. And maybe your um, adventures are helping other people explore their careers, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, so helping them, you know, chase away from the big ball that's coming right. behind them, which is their <laughs> yes. graduation date, yes, you know, exactly. so you're helping them too. Yeah. So that's fantastic. So, yeah. so what brought you to, to writing Rescript? Yeah, so I, um, you know, so most of my career was originally working in higher ed. I did that after I, I, I you know, finished my doctorate. Mm -hmm. And um, I was also working part-time at a women's counseling center. I was doing a little bit of teaching. And then I started my business mm -hmm. in 2008 as a part-time thing mm -hmm. while working full-time in higher ed. Mm. And, um, but you know, the, the journey is really like working with students, working with people in the community, and then my own challenges throughout, I would say, 
um, a little bit in high school, very much college and graduate mm -hmm. school um, anxiety and ultimately having panic attacks mm. and, and just making major changes in the conversations I was having with myself because I realized that like many people, I was my own worst enemy yes. and I made everything just that much more difficult for myself. Yeah. And that's where this book was born. It's really, I say it's a book about self-talk. It's a lot of, it encompasses goal setting and, and mm -hmm. passions and purpose and all kinds of different mm -hmm. stuff. But it's based in how do we talk to ourselves oh, about those girl. things and mm -hmm. other stuff. Yeah. Yes, and so I'm really glad that she gave me a <laughs> copy of this because I was like, I needed this yesterday. <laughs> um, I mean, eight practices to quiet that, quiet that inner antagonist because um, that's something that really can get in the yeah. way of not only living your life as a new grad, but just as a, you know, the after grad, you know, yeah. the life after after college piece, which can get a little muddy and, yeah. and how we speak to ourselves, you know, all the time, my, my husband's kind of like that inner antagonist, like I'll say it and he'll reflect back what I'm saying. He's yeah. like, oh, well, you're, you're, you're talking about my best friend that way. And so not everyone has yeah. a mirror or somebody to parrot back what's coming out of our, our heads yeah. and our minds. And so it's helpful for us to learn some techniques and how yeah. to be better to ourselves. Yeah. You know, that's so, so key. So when you, when you came up with the idea of being better to yourself, was that, that kind of the, the key to writing the book? Like what was the main, like kind of nugget without give, I guess, giving away the whole book? But, yeah. Uh. Um, the key is really, I mean, I say self-compassion is probably at the core of mm -hmm. it. Um, but it's really about how do we get out of our own way to mm -hmm. achieve our goals in every area of life? Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, looking at each area of our lives, career and all the, you know, relationships mm -hmm. and finances and recreation, self-care, everything. Um, how do we decide what do I want for myself? How do we create, you know, structure and practices in mm -hmm. our own lives to um, to actually accomplish the things we want to accomplish? Mm -hmm. And there's a whole chapter on that. But um, but how do we simultaneously, while doing that, um, make sure that we're talking to ourselves? And I say also about ourselves because right we mm, yes. we say things about ourselves yes. like you know oh that's just how I am or I'm just not the kind of person that can do something like that. Oh yeah, right? oh yeah. We tell our story yeah. in our head and then we speak it out. Right. And we're going to continue that that yeah. topic. We're going to take a quick little break and dive deeper in with Dr. Colleen Georges of Rescript. Take care. Shelter dogs aren't broken. They've simply experienced more life. If they were human, we would call them wise. They would be the ones with tales to tell and stories to write. The ones dealt a bad hand who responded with courage. Do not pity a shelter dog. Adopt one. Say we've got grit, and we'll take it as a compliment. Because it's our uncommon drive, our spark within, that brings us together and sets us apart. We are temple made. And when others take shortcuts, when others take breaks, when others take the easy way, we take charge. Add us on social media watch bloopers, behind-the-scenes footage, previews, and more. I work 13 hours a day, six days a week, so when I'm off the clock, I gotta get stuff done. So when I need a snack, I need something healthy, tasty, and easy to eat. Like wonderful pistachios without the shells. They're protein powered, delicious, and great on the go. And that's perfect for me. Thanks, Liz. A woman without a lot of time. 
Whether you're a gourmet cook or just want to eat like one, visit Rostelli Market Fresh, your home for the freshest locally sourced ingredients to please everyone who loves great food. Our organic meats, quality seafood, and free-range poultry are cut fresh to order. Chefs create culinary-inspired prep foods made fresh every day, which pair nicely with our vast selection of fine wines and spirits. Choose from handmade pastas, artisan cheeses, organic produce, and grocery items, all from the finest purveyors. Rostelli Market Fresh, from our family to yours. RVN TV is a platform for people of any industry to share their story. Over 285,000 viewers are tuning in to RVN TV shows monthly. We guarantee a great experience that you'll be sharing with everyone you know while increasing your personal and company's brand awareness. But what is your brand? According to Forbes, it's a combination of your logo, your product, your design and feel, and your personality. Did you know that aside from being a guest, we offer even more opportunity to boost your brand? Adding your company logo and website on screen during your interview will allow viewers to recognize your brand instantly. Incorporating images and video clips is another great way to showcase your product during your life. And welcome back to Career View Mirror. I'm your host, Joyelle Crawford, and we have Dr. Colleen Georges of Rescript. All right, we have her here. She is an everything. She's a, <laughs> that's her career. She's every woman, right? So you're, you do coaching bit. and speaking yeah. and teaching and, and family. Yes, yes, yes. And family, absolutely. You know, that's so the center. That's what the does center. a typical day look like in your career? <sighs> typical day, um, you know, I mean, getting up and, you know, getting, getting, well, I'm trying to get into a good habit of getting my son's lunch together at night. Uh, yes, ahead of time. And close together at night, mm -hmm. but I'm not consistent. I'm mm -hmm. not going to lie. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, getting him getting him ready for school, which largely he's 10, so he's doing a lot okay. of that himself now. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. Okay. Um, and then I drive him to school, which is mm -hmm. super close. And um, and then every day is different. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, there are days where um, I might, you know, have a session um, either phone or Skype right mm -hmm. away when mm -hmm. I come mm -hmm. back or there are some some folks I see in person and mm -hmm. I might go over to my local Panera where I meet some mm -hmm. my in-person clients. Yes, our work uh, away, our office away from home. I love Panera. They're all, they all know me over there. <laughs> know. They know where I sit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's different every day, but you know, I, I try to keep as many of my client appointments on certain days mm, and, and, and then my teaching, um, you know, is, it's different every semester. In mm -hmm. spring, I taught six classes because I was crazy that's and insane it was not I can't a even take six classes it was not a good idea <laughs> um, I have two right now okay which is very, very good manageable very good um, so Tuesdays and Fridays this semester my teaching mm -hmm. um, you know and then I have office hours often mm -hmm. before you know I try to set it up before my classes but sometimes after my classes mm -hmm. and um, and yeah, so it's like I, you know, and then there are some days where I might dedicate a day if I'm traveling to do a speaking engagement. Mm -hmm. um, on those days, I typically don't try not to do too much other stuff. Right, you want to keep it open. In yep, open and in the zone. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So you can think just about that. Mm -hmm. um, so I may do maybe one other appointment or something that mm -hmm. day. And, um, but it really is varied, and that's how I like it. That's I, good. I think that I, I thrive on that, you know, and I live on semesters because I teach, mm -hmm. so I say that each semester is different for right. me. Um, for others, that would be, you know, seasons. Right. right. Every, I don't like it, I, I don't like to feel like every day is the same. Every Groundhog's I like, day. No, exactly. I like it to thing. be different. Yeah. And then, you know, and then I pick up my son from aftercare because he loves to be in aftercare. Mm -hmm. and, because they play there. They've got to, yeah, that's and, good to play. Um, and then, mm -hmm. you know, then it's then it's piano today. Yeah, mm -hmm. we got piano on Mondays, we got musical theater, we got all these things oh, after wow. school. We volunteer at active. the food pantry on Wednesday that's fantastic. evenings a couple times a month. So mm -hmm. yeah. And that's you know, so there's no typical day. That's but great. that's the way I but like it. But that's the way you like it. <laughs> right. So what would you say is your why? You know, I talk to oh, clients yeah. all the time about understanding their why and how that kind of drives you, that's the fuel that keeps you going each day. So what would yeah. your why be, Colleen? I think my why is really very much that because I've been in dark places myself mm -hmm. emotionally, mm -hmm. um, I, and I say this a lot to my clients and to my students, 
I just never want anyone to feel alone in that. Mm, um, mm -hmm. And that, I mean, the reason for the book is that, mm -hmm. the reason for the speaking, I mean, is, is about because people in workplaces often feel unhappy, they feel right. unmotivated, they feel, you know this, they feel yes. disengaged. Absolutely. They feel in conflict with their colleagues, they mm -hmm. feel like, you know, uh, depressed that they have to go to work. So trying to bring more motivation, engagement, mm -hmm. and joy, and gratitude into the workplace. And and with my clients, just being, helping people. I just want people to feel like whatever it is that you want to do, while life will throw stuff at you, mm -hmm. it'll throw health problems, Absolutely. and traumas, and mm -hmm. tragedies, and struggles, big and small. Absolutely. And those are real, but on some level, we do we do have power over how we respond to those that's things. That's the key, it's the responsiveness. And that's the why, is yeah. not feeling, uh, wanting people to not feel in any arena, whether it's as a student, as a professional, as a person, mm -hmm. that, you, that you are at the whim of life. Right, that life is leading you instead of you leading your right. life. Right. Oh, we have sh we share so oh, many yeah. good. This is like yes, this is good, good yeah. stuff. Yes, thank you for sharing that yeah. because that thank is that is truly impactful. Didn't you do it? You did a TEDx talk I did too. A TED talk, yeah, yeah. So, so was it about about rescripting your life? It right? was. It was. Um, yeah, and the 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 title of the book comes from the it's rescript the, the TEDx was rescripting the stories we tell ourselves, mm. and. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where the title was born. Mm -hmm. But the concept that brought me to do the TED Talk is all the same things, mm -hmm. you know, again, just mm -hmm. all those moments in life. You know, I, I was just joking as I was texting someone before that who knew that I'd ever spend so much time talking in front of people <laughs> because, you know, like most people, that was close to, you know, in terms of fear, close to death for yes. me. Yeah, it you is, is the top three um, right. fears out there. And speaking in front of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that was, it was no different for me. I was absolutely terrified. And the reason I even started teaching was because I was trying to overcome fear because I knew it was going to keep causing me problems in my career. It already was. Mm. So, um, so, you know, all of that, the TED, the TED Talk was me saying, what's the, like for me, what's the ultimate thing I could do as far as speaking to mm -hmm. kick, Just you know, this really thing done. Yes, get nip it's it in done. the bud. So, yeah, that is, and that's a vulnerable spot to yeah. be in, to, to share your story and to, to speak in front of that audience and what have you. So, yeah, yeah that is, that's key. But facing yeah. your fears is also what, what catapults your career and what, ca what mm -hmm. helps you to lead your life in a way that you want to lead it instead yeah. of it leading you. Yeah. So that's fantastic. So what do you do in rescripting your life? How do you get your self-care and how do you refill your cup? Because, I mean, it's a yeah. lot of stuff that you're doing. Yeah. You wear a lot of hats. So how do you fill your energetic cup? Well, you know, I, I think it's important to say that I make a lot of the same, you know, and have made a lot of the same mistakes that I'm telling my clients not to make, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and so I would say over the last couple of years, I've been working really hard on you know, really walking my talk in more areas. Yes. I walk it in a lot of areas, mm -hmm. but when it came to balance, mm -hmm. you know, as we've discussed, we've I was not walking it mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. um, and so something I've done over the last, I'd probably say the last two years is I've made a habit of when it's eight o'clock, I shut my computer off because I, I basically would sit there and be typing oh, and yeah. working on Brian things and answering emails until midnight and sometimes two, who knows, you know. Um, now that's my marker. When it's seven something, I know it's we're shutting it, it down. That's mm -hmm. it. And then, and then it's, I'm. It's, I love television. Yes. I love Hulu. I love Netflix. Me I ain't too. gonna play. I know there's some folks out there that are just like TV is awful. TV makes me happy. Yeah, <laughs> TV makes me happy too. It kind of so, it calms the yeah. chatter in my brain, so yeah. I can just escape to mindless tell. What and are some a, of your favorite shows? Oh my goodness. Well, I was watching Succession last night. So that's Succession, a, I've never heard of that this is one. An is this new? Yeah, it is. It's in its, is this the second season, third season, I think? Um, but it's it's an HBO show and it's okay. so good. But I mean, we have all kind. Of, we have Walking Dead. I mean, forget yeah. it. We have everything. Handmaid's <laughs> Tale, all, all of the above. Like yes. my husband and I love television. Yes. We share that. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's another big thing. Mm -hmm. I love my family. My two favorite people to be with are my husband and my son. That's and great. that's who I'm with at night, every night when it's you know time for us to just that's you know be time. together or watch mm -hmm. something or you know. I, 
yeah, that's a big decompressor. I, but I, we also, this past weekend, what was it, Saturday night, uh, I love Halloween. We went to one of the f scare oh, places. One of those fright night things. Uh, we're going another one this weekend. I'm, oh I I have a thing about them. I can't I like go. Them very much. I just think, they, they, you know, I don't like the people <laughs> reaching and touching. And yeah, I, so that thing, that, that that's your thing. That's you guys my like thing. the things. So, that's yeah. my thing. So have you gone to the Eastern Penitentiary? I haven't yet. You need to go to that one. Yes. You've done it? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Everyone, I heard a commercial on my it's, way here. It is. It <sighs> will scare you to death. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. I'll, I will. I will <laughs> at some point. Check I think this your out. son might like it too. Does he like that kind of stuff he does. too? He does. Yeah. He comes with us. Yeah. Now. They go over the top. <laughs> they go over the top with that one. That's yeah, good. You'll like, like it. That should be fun. But those are you know when it comes to decompressing, it's just letting go of tech, like mm -hmm. setting a time for it to be done mm -hmm. and. Being with my family, you know, I love amusement parks. I love, I mean, just, yeah, mm. just, that's it. It's not, you know, nothing extravagant or mm -hmm. fancy. I like yeah. to go to restaurants, too. Yes, you're foodie. I, like I like to eat, too. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that is, it's how you, how you, you just escape by just cutting things off yeah. and creating those boundaries. Yeah. So that's, that is super important to share yeah. because a lot of times we don't do that enough, yeah. right? So that's how you can definitely rescript your life. So is there any, are there any myths out there about being a leadership coach? We were talking about this a little earlier, earlier yeah. about yeah. myths of uh, entrepreneur life oh, and laptop God. lifestyles. What's, yeah. what's one myth out there that you'd like to dispel about being a coach? You know, there was something I was thinking before we started talking, but that's another big one. But the thing I was thinking is that, you know, I find that when clients come to us, there's a perception that we must have got it all figured out. Yes. Right, that we don't have these issues anymore, you right. know, and that you know you learn some things, and then you'll never you'll never have negative yes. chatter in your mind yes. anymore. Life and I'm perfect. And I'm always joking that like I wrote this book, I use this every day. Mm -hmm. Like it, it doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big thing is the belief that people who are coaches or counselors or educators are somehow now like you've self-actualized and you're mm -hmm. just good now mm -hmm. you know so no, you got no problem yeah no it's like life work you're yeah. doing that same work every on day. yourself every day mm -hmm. and you get better and better at it and it's you have tools um, because we're you were giving those tools to people mm -hmm. so we you know we're using those tools but I think that's a big thing and that is so true yeah and and then what you said earlier when we were chatting about you know that that idea of like oh you're sitting on the beach yeah no, you're not you know yeah. it's it's work yeah you know being an entrepreneur is it's a whole different type of work yeah. you know it's it's more um, it's more diverse, it's more varied. You do obviously choose what your schedule looks like. Mm -hmm. But you know, your one home and work are the same thing. Yeah. They coexist. They do. And you have to learn how to not not turn the TV on during the day. Absolutely. Cuz then no, it no. just then it yes. <laughs> Cuz then nothing gets done. Right. You know, it's it's there's nothing worse than like I'll I'll be doing a coaching <laughs> Uh, coaching a client and I have to put Dr. Phil on mute and I'm like, ah, this is right. not good. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. like that needs its space. Yes. So that space for me is nighttime. Yes. But yeah, and just like that, you know, it is awesome mm -hmm. to have your own thing. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't do it any other way, right? Mm -hmm. But but it's it's still hard work. Yeah, and yeah. it is. And it's, it's about um, finding the, making the time so that um, that it doesn't take all of your life away right so that's a really big thing that I you know that I want to work on is making sure yeah. that I find space for my joy yeah. you know and and my family time so that's really yeah. good those are some great things so here's the last question yeah. what are one or two career tips that you could would share with your younger self yeah. you know like what do you know now that you'd like to have told little Colleen you yeah. know back then you know I think that one of the most important things is that there isn't, there isn't, you know, that you have to choose one mm. thing. I think that, you know, that that's an important thing is, um, is I always thought I was odd because I wanted to do multiple things. Right, right. Um, and, and that there, there isn't one way to, like, because I think, I, I just, like many people, thought like, okay, the goal is like the, the salaried, mm -hmm. full-time, you know, thing. and. 
And when I decided to walk away from that, I, I, I think I really did think, am I, am I crazy? Am I doing a yeah. crazy thing? This is yeah. so risky. So I think I would tell myself, just follow your, follow your heart. Don't, don't think too hard about right. it. Like, yes, you should plan and, and, and not make right. you know, hasty decisions, but, um, but realize that, that every, what, what each person wants is different. Right. And that you're not crazy just because you, you know, want a little different, exactly. a little extra different in your life. Yeah, that's one thing. And I think, you know, the other thing is that, and this goes back to what we we're just kind of talking about, um, I think that it took me a really long time to understand that it was okay to not do. Yeah. And um, like, like, like just recently, <laughs> so, <laughs> like really just recently. Um, yeah, you know, you, you talk about it and, and it's, but in the end, that voice that whispers when you sit down to relax, you should be doing something. I'm in a place right now where I'm finally embracing just being. Oh, you're so good. I bow down to you. And, but it's very, it's very, <laughs> yeah, new. very new. It's going to take some, some more practice on my, on my hands. That yeah. it'd be, be a human being, not a human doing is one of my friends says. That's, it's, that's it. Yeah. Thank you for that advice. And thank you for being on the show. Oh, thank Where can you. we find you? Where can we find you? Um, I am at www.colleengeorges.com. Um, that is two L's, two E's and an S at the end of Georges. <laughs> um, and yeah, all, all my services are there. Got a link to the book there. Mm -hmm. And for anybody interested, career coaching, life coaching, or if you're looking to have a nicer conversation with yourself, the, the, you can, I, I hope the, the rescript will be a tool for you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for thank your time you. today. Thank you. I'm so excited oh, to, to finally yes, meet you in person yes. after talking with you on the phone. This is fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show. And thank, thank you. you all for watching Career View Mirror. Hopefully you'll tune in on Mondays at 1.30 p.m. for our next episode. Take care. Have a good one.